Professor Dave and Chegg here. We've learned about cis and trans terminology as it pertains to alkenes, but this terminology is only relative. We will need a way to communicate the absolute configuration of alkenes. So let's learn how to do that now. As we have seen previously, when we have a di-substituted alkene, like 2-butene, we can have a cis isomer, where the methyls are on the same side of the double bond, and we can have a trans isomer, where the methyls are on opposite sides of the double bond. But let's say we have four different groups on these two carbons, like these four different halogens. Now, is this alkene cis or trans? That terminology no longer works, because it is relative terminology. A group can be cis to another group, or trans to another group, but we need a singular way to describe this molecule so as to give it a definite name. That's where E and Z configurations come in. In order to use this terminology, we will have to revisit the Kahn Ingold prelog convention that we learned for assigning R and S to stereocenters. Let's take this example with the halogens. The way we will assign the absolute configuration of this alkene is as follows. Take one of the carbons participating in this double bond. Consider the two groups that are connected to this carbon. Just as we know how to do with the kahn ingold prelog convention, assign them priorities based on atomic number. This one is higher, so it is of higher priority. Now look at the other carbon in the double bond and consider the two groups that are connected to it. Do the same thing as we did with the first carbon. This one is higher, so it is higher priority. Now look at the two groups with higher priority, as they are on the same side with respect to the plane that contains the double bond, this is a Z alkene. If they were to be on opposite sides of that plane, it would be an E alkene. These stand for zusammen and entgegen, which are German words meaning together and opposite respectively. A very silly but very effective way to remember this convention is to remember Z same side. Same side, Z. Opposite sides, E. So that's really all there is to this convention. Of course, it can seem a little trickier when the molecule is more involved, such as this one, but it isn't really any more complicated if we remember that we simply go one atom at a time. So here, for this left carbon, we have a long carbon chain, and we have a hydroxyl group. Avoid the temptation of labeling the carbon chain as the higher priority simply because it is a large group. We are not looking at whole substituents. We are looking strictly at the singular atom that is connected to the carbon that is participating in the double bond. So it's not whole big group versus hydroxyl. It is carbon versus oxygen. Oxygen has a greater atomic number, so this group takes priority. On the other side, we have two carbon chains, which means we are starting with two identical carbon atoms, both of which are bonded to two hydrogens. That means that we must continue until we find the first point of difference. Continuing on to the next carbon, we see that this one is connected to two carbons and one hydrogen, as opposed to this one, which is connected to one carbon and two hydrogens. Carbon beats hydrogen, so this group ends up taking the higher priority. Because it is opposite the hydroxyl with respect to the pi bond, this is an E alkene. We can combine this terminology with what we already know about IUPAC nomenclature by simply placing E or Z in parentheses in front of the IUPAC name of the molecule, and this will communicate the structure of an alkene more thoroughly than what we learned before. With that, we should be able to assign E or Z absolute configuration to any carbon-carbon double bond in an organic molecule. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.